Hey guys, it's Scott with Scotty B Cards, and in this video, I'm gonna break down some print runs for you. So we all have wondered how many of this card exist. You know, you have a base card of, let's say, a Mookie Betts Tops update card. We're gonna talk about that in this video, so we're gonna use that as an example. How many of these are out there? Is there 10,000? Is there 20,000? Is there 100,000? Is there a million? It's kind of tough to tell. Tops does release pack odds on the back of their products, and so you can get a rough estimate if it's higher or lower than the previous year, but it's hard to tell exactly how many exist. In this video, I did my very best to show you exactly how many not just Mookie Betts cards exist, but I broke down 2021 Top Series 1 and showed you how many of each of those cards exist. The difference is pretty crazy, and I think you'll be very surprised to see where we're at right now. I'm going to show you my work so you can do this in the future for yourself. And it took me a long time. So I had to ask my father, who's a mathematician. He actually teaches math at a university. And then I actually asked a couple of friends on Instagram to review my work. Before we do start, though, disclaimer, I personally am not a mathematician. I do not know all the ins and outs of math. I graduated with my degree in finance, but, you know, that's not going to really help me. Overall, I could only calculate certain products. I had to make assumptions based off of those results. And so it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be very close. And lastly, I may be wrong. I may be completely wrong. I don't think I am. I had other people probably smarter than me review it. So I don't think I'm wrong, but I just want to throw that out there. So now I want to talk about my methodology and assumptions. So first things first, I'm going to be using clear cards to determine hobby products. Hobby boxes, they have the clear card, which is numbered to 10 exclusively in their product. So you can see on the back of the pack exactly how hard it is to get one of those. And you can do some math to figure out how many of each card is produced in the hobby product. Next up, I'm using foil boards to figure out how many complete sets exist. So I can add that to the running total of how many of each base card exist. And then after that, I assumed that there are the same number of base cards in jumbo and hobby. It's not going to be the same, but it's going to be close enough where it's going to be marginal, maybe five to 10% off. So I'm comfortable assuming it's going to be that way. I also assume that retail products are two to two and a half times more printed than hobby. There are no retail exclusives for tops that are listed on the pack. And for that reason, I did not pretend to know everything, but overall there are a ton of retail products back in 2014, which is the first that we'll look at. There are less retail products, but there's still probably double what hobby was. But if we go to modern cards like 2021 top series one, which we'll also look at, there are a bunch of different options for retail products and that makes them more printed. Tops knew that retail is a really big important space right now. People like retail. Walmarts get bought out so they produced more of it. So I assume two to two and a half times more than hobby products. I also assume that all cards in each pack are base cards. And this may be problematic because let's say 90% are base cards but 10% are inserts but overall that's going to be too hard to calculate and so I just assumed if it's a 10 card pack all 10 cards are base cards. And numbers not be exact but they should be around 85 to 95% accurate. 95 is hopeful. 85 is pessimistic. So right around that range. Okay. So let's look at the first product, 2014 Topps Chrome Update. I picked this one very deliberately because the Topps Chrome Update products between 2013 and 2016, they came in a mega box. The mega box comes with seven packs, five packs of Topps Update and two packs of Topps Chrome Update. The reason that's important is because this is the only way you can get Topps Chrome Update. And so it's really tough. You have to buy a $15 there, but $300 now box and you get eight Chrome cards. That's it. And even though the set's smaller, you know, 55 cards for this Chrome set, it's still tough to get the card you want, whether it's the Mookie, the DeGrom, the George Springer, whatever it's going to be. So a couple things about this product, because it's released only in this format, it's really easy to figure out the print run. We have gold refractors numbered to 250. Those are one in 11 packs of Topps Chrome Update. So if there's two packs in this box, it's probably one in every five to six boxes. And now you have black refractors that are numbered to 99. They're in one in every 27 packs. So like, what is that? 13-ish boxes in order to get a black refractor. It's a 55 card base set and there are four cards per pack. This means that there is one gold parallel for every 44 base cards and there's one black parallel for every 108 base cards. So let's do the math. I'll show you exactly the math that we did to get the number. First, we need to see how many golds exist in the product. So you take 250, which is what the golds are number two, and times that by how many cards are in the base set, which is 55, you get 13,750 total golds in the set. Now you need to find out exactly how many cards per gold it's going to take. So right here, you have four cards per pack, 11 packs is how many it takes to get a gold parallel. So like we said earlier, 44 base cards to one gold. Next up, we do the math. We go one over 44 equals 13,750 over X. If we solve for X, it gets you to 605,000 cards. That is the number of cards in the print run, not just of one card, but of the total print run. And it's easy to find out because of this simple one format product. So now we have to take however many cards are in the product and divide it by the total. So that gives us 11,000 of each base card, which is extremely low as we'll see a little bit earlier. But is that the same with the gold parallels? 
So let's do the same thing. 99 times 55, because they're numbered to 99, that gets us 5,455 total block refractors. And now we need to know how hard it is to get that card four times 27. That's 108 base cards to one block refractor. So now it's one over 108 equals 5,455 over X, solve for X. We're a little bit off, but not by much. That's 588,060. And now if we divide 55 into that, because that's how many cards are in the base set, it gets us 10,692. So about 308 off of where we were on the other estimate, but it's still really close. It's gonna be slightly off simply because there's other inserts. There's jerseys and autograph jerseys that change it up a little bit. So overall, we're between 11,000 to 12,000 base cards for each card in the set. So not many at all. They're really, really scarce, and that's why this product is really high demand to get good players and good grades. So now let's go to a little bit harder product. This is 2014 Tops Update. It's gonna be a lot more printed. Let's just start off with the same way. So what we're going to do is we're looking at the clear cards. As you can see right here, clears are one in every 182 packs and they're numbered to 10. So there's 330 cards in this base set. This is the paper Tops Update. And so you go 330 times 10, which gets us 3,300 clear cards numbered to 10 in the entire product between every card. And now we need to figure out how many base cards it takes to get a clear card. So you go 10, because 10 is how many cards are in each hobby pack times that by 182 because that's how many packs it takes to get one clear card and you're at 1820 cards base cards to every clear card so we're gonna take the same formula which is one over 1820 and we equal that to 3300 over x and solve for x which gets us to in just this hobby box format not the complete print run just the hobby box format we get six million six thousand total cards in that hobby product so that gets us 18,200 of each base card in hobby boxes. So now we need to look at the entire print run. So hobby boxes is 18,200. I, again, I said the assumption is that retails double and jumbo is the same. So if we take that assumption, we're at 72,800 per each card, which sounds like a lot. That's 72,000 Mookie Betts rookie cards. It's not that bad. There's 5,000 graded by PSA. That's not that high of a print run in comparison to what we're seeing right now and also what we saw back in the junk wax era. So now let's look at 2021 Top Series 1. Here are the packs. I couldn't find a better photo than this for the actual back of the hobby pack, but you can see the clear is now one in every 1,938. I understand that Top's update is printed less than Top Series 1, and I'm aware of that, but Top's update I wanted to show because we had the Chrome that was easy to predict. So significantly more. 182 is Tops update from 2014. Now 2021, we're in one in every 1,938 to get a clear card. So now we have clear cards are one in every 1,938 packs, a number to 10. There's 14 cards in a hobby pack nowadays. And this is a little bit different because even though there's 330 cards in the total set, Tops now only takes 100 total cards in the clear set. So they pick 100 out of the 330 and that's how many they make. So now we only have 1,000 clear cards, which is partially why this is higher, but also because print runs are higher as well. We can still calculate this and find the answer we're looking for. So again, same thing, how many clear cards exist? A thousand of them. Now we have to find exactly how many cards it takes to get a clear card in this product. So it's 14 cards in each hobby pack. It takes 1,938 hobby packs to get one clear card. So we're at 27,132 base cards to one clear card. So if we do the same formula, that gets us to 27 million, 132,000 total cards in just the hobby box product. Not jumbo, just the hobby box. Now, if we divide that by 330, we get 82,000 of each card just in hobby boxes. 82,218 to be exact, which is more than the entire print run of 2014 Tops Update. So if we want to find out more, we have to look at the Walmart complete sets and the hobby complete sets. So these ones I had to do a little bit different, but not by much. This is a 660 card complete set. It's series one and two, but regardless, you get the series one cards in there. Each card has a foil board parallel numbered to 790 in this box. So you get five of those in each box. So there's 660 cards in the set. We times that by 790. That gets us 521,400 total foil cards in this set. And then we go, we do a little bit different formula. Now we're five over one because we get five instead of just, you know, whatever it was before. And that equals X over 52,400, which is 104,280 total Walmart sets. If you look at the actual amount of Walmarts in the United States, I think it's 4,700 times that about 20 sets each. That's the same number. Plus a lot of these Walmart sets don't hit Walmart anymore. So we're at 104,000 just for this one version of the complete set. Now we have the hobby version, do the same math. 
These ones are numbered to 310. They're a little bit more scarce, but it's still the same five foil boards per box. So that gets us to uh, 204,600 total foil boards. And now we're at 40,920 total sets for this type of box. Now we have the purple version, which is at Target and a couple other retailers. And so we're gonna estimate that is roughly the same as the hobby exclusive products. There's about 2000 targets in the States. And so we're looking at 40,000 sets as well. So let's tally it all up. And now we're at 555,181 per each card if you add everything together. And I actually feel this is relatively conservative. A lot of other people are saying it's higher, but based off of pack odds, I feel pretty confident we're within 100,000. So that's 80% accuracy. <laughs> so not bad. Uh, overall, like this is pretty crazy to see. You know, this is up, I believe, 34% from last year, which is really significant when you consider if we go up 34% for the next two years, we're at a million cards of each player. So we don't want to continue this. It's going to be a little bit tough. So does this matter? Does it matter that there's more? Like this meme says, well, yes, but actually, no, not really. We all know print runs were higher. It's just a matter of calculating them that kind of scares us a little bit. On top of that, the print runs aren't damning quite yet in the sense that they aren't going to kill the hobby right now. They're on that trend, but I want to emphasize based off of where the junk wax era was and where we are now, it's not even the same situation. Year over year, hobby print runs, just the hobby print runs, not anything else, and you can tell by the clear cards in the back of the pack, is up 34.86%, almost 35%. 2021 top series one boxes are up 335 percent over 2014 tops update boxes i do know update is printed less but hobby from six years ago is essentially 335 percent more so if we have six more years in 2027 it's not going to look too good tops probably will not have the rights so maybe it'll be a good thing but it won't look good for another 335 percent higher Assuming hobby products show the same increase across the board, like I said, we will hit about a million cards per player around 2023. So right here's the exact total if I did, if you do the math. So the one thing I wanna point out, like I say all the time on this channel, make sure you're buying smart because if you're buying just base cards, that's not necessarily the best way to go anymore. Back in 2011 with Mike Trout, there's about 50,000 of those made, maybe slightly more, slightly less. That's what it's estimated to be. Nowadays, we're looking at upwards of half a million to a million cards. So it's not the same situation. Buy golds out of 2021, buy other parallels. Buy things that you're confident will retain value when less people are interested in the products because that's just the natural cycle in sports cards. Sports cards will always be around in some capacity and people are going to collect them. Whether it's mainstream or nerdy or whatever you want to look at it, it's going to be here. So you want to make sure you have the right cards for the worst case situation that you still have value. Now there is some risk you have to assume because not always the more scarce card is the more valuable card. That's not necessarily true. Scarcity does not equal value. You have to have a demand for the product and if it's so scarce no one knows about it, you don't have a demand. So that's why like a gold out of 2021 is good. That's why a black out of 71 for next year will be really good for Wander Franco. Just buy smart. So does this matter? Yes and no. Just make sure you're doing the right thing and not paying too much for base cards. Okay, guys, that is all I have for you. Thank you for watching. Let me know down in the comments below what your thoughts are on the increasing print runs. And other than that, I will catch you in the next video.